Making the textures. In this lesson, I will demonstrate and talk through seven different exercises you can try, which are fairly quick and make use of ink, charcoal, large and small paint brushes, a roller and a rag. Use the video however works for you. You may want to watch all the way through first and stop and start as you try each one in turn, or watch it all and feel inspired to go your own way and create your own texture ideas by experimenting with the equipment. These exercises are just a guide. Whatever you do, I do recommend trying at least seven varieties of marks to give yourself a chance to get in the swing of it. You'll notice you'll start to warm up and get less precious about 10 minutes in. So aim for an uninterrupted session of about 30 minutes to an hour. If you've been able to review your photo walk images, then keep some of those textures and shapes in mind and use them as inspiration as you go through these exercises. Exercise one. In this first exercise, I mix black ink with a little bit of water in a bowl and using a small paintbrush, I'm dabbing ink on the page with just one touch rather than a stroke of the paintbrush. I decide to make the ink mark in a series of rows, creating a uniform background for future work on the same surface. I dip the brush back into the ink regularly to top up and keep going until the whole A4 page is filled. I like how the watery ink gives variation in tone with areas of light and dark. Be careful to dry this texture so it's flat so that you don't get any drip lines on the page. Exercise two. This time I use a larger brush but using the same diluted ink. I fill the brush with ink and as I make contact with the paper, I swivel the brush in a circle, making a rough circular shape. I repeat this randomly over the page. You could be more structured with your own mark if you want. I fill gaps and I try to swivel the brush in different directions with each contact. Exercise three. This is a very quick mark making exercise and one that will get you used to using the roller. I'm using a small paint roller from a DIY store. To control how much ink is added, I use the paintbrush to apply ink to the roller. You could also use a small tray of ink to apply the ink to the roller. When I fill the circumference of the roller with enough ink, I very lightly roll over the paper in parallel lines. Because the ink is watery, it creates a mottled effect on the page. You could vary this exercise with different rolling directions, you could shorten the length of the roll that you make, and you could use larger pieces of paper if you want more space to make more marks with the roller. Exercise four. I'm using a small section of an old cleaning cloth, which has a really good rough texture to it. I'm dipping the rag into some diluted ink, and I simply press the rag between my fingertips onto the paper to make a mark. I repeat the mark to fill the page, with the rag textures. You can see how different levels of ink on the rag makes a lighter or stronger mark. And this is something you could experiment with if you want to vary your texture page. Exercise five. With a medium to large paintbrush and using some more concentrated ink mix, I'm making long brush strokes across the page in various directions. You can see where the brush is slightly drier, where it has less ink, because you can see some more detail from the bristles on the page. And you could experiment with this by changing how much ink is on your brush, it will make different qualities of texture. You could also lengthen or shorten the brush strokes to make different patterns on the page. Exercise six. This exercise uses a stick of charcoal dipped in ink and then pressing down on the paper with the full length of the charcoal to make an elongated mark. This is a good way to get a feel for how charcoal works, pressing heavy or light on the paper. It's a loose, unpredictable way of adding the ink to the page as well. I like the combination of smooth ink and grainy charcoal. Exercise seven. This exercise shows you how you can combine mark making ideas together on one surface. 
Using some diluted ink and a regular size paintbrush, I'm making watery strokes on the page. Because they are watery, I've got some time to play around with the drying ink, using a pencil to score lines onto the ink. You can see how the pencil line gets darker in the inky areas. Once I've scored lines in two directions with the pencil, I can see there's still potential to interrupt the drying ink further. I used the charcoal again, but this time I used the tip of the charcoal to draw repeated lines over the surface, soaking up some of the ink along the way. Things to consider. These are just seven short exercises that you can try, and of course you can make variations on. I wanted just to share a few things to remember and consider as you try out this module, creating your textures. Make sure you have plenty of available drying space. You will quickly create many sheets of textures and you need space for them to dry flat without placing layers on top of each other. You'll feel more relaxed if you know already where it can all go. I encourage you to find ways to vary each of these exercises in your own way. Perhaps you can copy my direction first and then repeat the exercise two or three times with your own interpretation, tweaking the exercise a little. These exercises are just starting points to get you going. There's no perfect way to complete a texture. Repetition and consistency are key on whatever sort of mark you make. These textures will become very useful backdrops and layers for future work, so don't worry too much about any ideal outcome. Treat the exercises like a warm-up for your hand and eye skills. It will get you used to the idea of experimenting and getting to know your own visual language and method. Don't be afraid to make a mess. Get in the flow and stay in the flow and worry about tidying up when you're all done. Have fun and good luck and I look forward to seeing you in module three.